Hello students, myself Sunita, welcome to the session. So in today's session, we shall be discussing about the first type of cell division that is M phase, nothing but mitotic phase. So in a previous session, we have understood what exactly is cell cycle and what are the different phases of cell cycle, which includes interface and M phase. The interface is broadly classified into G1 phase, S phase and G2 phase. And sometimes it also can enter G0 phase only under certain circumstances. Then comes the M phase, which is further divided into two phases, which we'll be learning today. One is the karyokinesis. Karyokinesis means the division of nucleus, followed by cytokinesis, that is division of cytoplasm. So mitotic division, which is nothing but M phase, comprises of two important phases, which includes karyokinesis and cytokinesis. The karyokinesis is further divided into four substages. The formula which I have given you already is PMAT, which includes prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So we shall go ahead and look into what exactly is mitotic phase and what are the names given to, alternative names given to mitotic phase and also the sequential events which goes on taking place in mitotic phase along with the significance of mitosis. Mitotic phase is also called as equational division. Basically, M phase or mitotic phase is called as dramatic phase. Why is it called as dramatic phase? Because there are so many changes. There are so many uh, reorganization which is occurring in this particular phase. So henceforth, it is called as equational division or it is also called as dramatic phase. Why is it called as equational division? Mitosis is also called as equational division. Why is it called as equational division? Because when a parental cell divides itself by undergoing mitotic division, so the number of chromosomes in the parental cell and in the progeny will be the same. I have even told you this in our previous session. So the parental cell and the progeny cell remain same. Hence, both it is called as equal division or equational division. So for the convenience, Mitotic phase or mitosis is divided into four stages, which includes prophase, metaphase, and anaphase and telophase. So we shall go ahead, look into what is prophase. Prophase, the word uh, is derived from a Greek word, which is called as pro, which means before, and phases means state. So prophase is the first phase of mitotic division. So under PMAT, we know that this is the first stage. What exactly happens during prophase? So during prophase, prophase is going to happen after the G2 phase, that is after the interface. So if we have to recollect the interface, which is divided into G1 phase, S phase, G2 phase, and then comes the prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, followed by cytokinesis. So these phases are called as karyokinesis, karyokinesis. And this is called as cytokinesis and the overall phases here we call it as interface. So now the cell is ready for undergoing the cell division after completion of cell cycle. Cell 
cycle is for about in case of human beings is about 24 hours. So in out of 24 hours, 23 hours is going to be spent during the preparation stage that is during interface. So the cell and the components, the synthesis of biomolecules, the replication of the DNA, the formation of RNA, everything would have already taken place. Uh, protein synthesis as well would have already taken place in uh, the interface stages, which includes G1, S and G2 phases. Now the cell is completely ready. The nucleus is ready to undergo certain changes. So what are the changes which we observe in case of prophase? So changes are the sequential events which goes on taking place is like this. Generally, in case of prophase, the chromosomes are, we don't call it as chromosomes initially, we call it as fibers. So they are just thin thread-like structures which are observed in case of the prophase stage, okay, in a cell. So they are thin thread-like structures. So these thin thread-like structures, they undergo condensation. Condensation means the uh, there will be reduction in the size of the chromatin fibers or the, you know, and also followed by the coiling. So there will be coiling and also there will be condensation. So when during the condensation, it will be reduced. And also the process which is involved is dehydration, removal of water to form short and thick chromatids. So chromatids are formed. So starting from, starting from, chromatin fibers they are going to form chromatids and later these chromatids are going to form chromosomes so chromatin fibers are undergoing the process of condensation to form chromatids. So chromatids undergo further condensation to form the chromosomes. That means in a structure of chromatid, so you know that this thin thread-like structures now are undergone coiling and they when they undergo coiling and then they form thick thread-like structures, these thick thread-like structures, they are going to transform to form the chromosomes. And each part of the chromosome will be having arms which are going to be transformed from this called as chromatids, called as chromatids. So how do they appear? Chromatids are short and they are thick thread-like structures. This is formed due to con condensation of DNA and also due to condensation of proteins later to form the chromosomes. And, cro and a single chromosome is attached to a center region. And this center region is called as the centromere. It's called as centromere. And these are the arms of the chromosomes, which are called as chromatids. They are called as chromatids. Okay, these two are called as chromatids. Okay, these are called as chromatids. Now, other than this, what else will happen during prophase? So, during prophase, the centrioles move towards the opposite poles and they develop short microtubules radiating from there from them to form asters. So centrioles are the structures which are generally L-shaped structures, okay? So these structures, which are perpendicular to each other, they are going to be moving towards the opposite poles, okay? They move towards the opposite poles and this is how they appear. So if they are perpendicular, then they move towards the opposite poles, they're going to be like this. So if they are in L shape, they move towards the opposite poles, then they are going to be like this. Okay. 
So from the centrioles, the proteins which are going to form are nothing but the microtubules radiating to form star-like structures which are called as asters. Asters are basically present only in case of animal cell and absent in case of plant cell. Henceforth, in case of the plant cell, the condition is called as an astral. The condition is called as an astral, whereas in case of animal cell, it is going to form the mitotic spindle. So here we call it as astral mito mitosis. Astral mitosis. Whereas in case of plant cell, since the centrioles are absent, it will not be able to produce any star-like structures. So henceforth, it is called as an astral. It's called as an astral. Whereas in case of animal cells, it is said to be astral mitosis. Okay. So what are basically these going to form? They are nothing but the centrioles. Along with centrioles, the spindle fibers are going to be formed from the microtubules. And that is on together called as mitotic spindle or mitotic apparatus. Mitotic spindle or mitotic apparatus are going to be holding the chromosomes at the center region, which is called as kinetochore. Okay, so we'll look into the picture and understand much better. And apart from these events, the nuclear envelope. So if a cell is here, the nucleus, of course, this is a cell. Inside that, the nucleus is present. And since it is the plant cell, it has a cell wall. If it is an animal cell, the boundary will be plasma membrane, the outermost boundary. So in case of a plant cell, if we have to take the nuclear envelope surrounding the nucleus, nucleolus will be present. Now the chromosomes are held together by the chromatids. It would be like this. Okay. And the nuclear membrane, they are going to disintegrate. They are going to disintegrate. And only what remains is the thread-like structures. Which are present like this. Okay. So only these thread-like structures would be present and the nuclear envelope would later disappear. And the nucleoli, nucleolus, which is present there as a dark substance, that also will disappear later and it will decrease in the size. So these are the major events which take place in prophase. So just would like to recollect once again. Remember the major events? Chromatin fibers are undergoing to form chromatids. And these chromatids undergo the formation of chromosomes where chromatids are nothing but the arms or the structures which are attached to the centromere of the chromosome. And later, centrioles are going to be formed in case of animal cell, whereas in case of plant cell, they are called as anastral. In case of animal cell, they are going to be forming mitotic spindle or they're also called as mitotic apparatus. Along with that, the main focus is now only on the chromosomes which are present in the nucleus. So henceforth, the nuclear envelope becomes fragmented first and later they get disappeared. Along with the nuclear envelope, the nucleoli, they decrease in size and gradually they disappear. So these are the events which take place in prophase of mitosis. So you can see the diagram. To understand much more better. So the thin thread-like structures from the chromatin fibers which are formed into chromatids and later they have formed into chromosomes. You can make out that there is a centromere. So this centromere holds the chromosome at the center and these are the chromatids. These are the chromatids. And you can see that the centrioles, which are lying perpendicular to each other, they are going to form the star-like structure. They're going to form the star-like structure. 
these star like structures are called as the asters and later asters are going to produce the protein fibers and these protein fibers are called as spindle apparatus or they are also called as spindle fibers basically they are made up of proteins which are called as microtubules micro means small tubules means they are basically elongated structures and also you can see in the next picture there is gradual disappearance of the nuclear membrane along with the nucleolus and also we can see that now the chromosomes which are formed generally in early prophase you see all the structures which have been disappearing but now the main focus should be only on the chromosomes in late prophase that is when it is next undergoing the next changes which is entering the next phase that is the metaphase there is a transition phase between prophase late prophase and early metaphase so during that time the nucleolar membrane would have already disappeared but the chromosomes would start aligning themselves towards the equatorial plane okay so now the chromosomes are ready to undergo the next phase the transition which has already happened here will now lead to the next phase that is metaphase so this is the diagrammatic view how exactly it looks in the microscope and you can see the in case of animal cell and also in case of plant cell so these structures which you are seeing here is the chromosomes okay the chromatin thread like structures and that is how you can see the disintegration which has already happened the nuclear membrane which has disintegrated which starts disintegrating during the early prophase and now you can you can make out that there is no such nuclear membrane which is present in the late prophase only the chromosomes are now getting ready to enter into the next phase that is metaphase so this is a transition phase this is a transition phase this is a transition phase from from prophase to metaphase prophase to metaphase the phase in between is called as transition phase right let's go ahead with the next stage that is metaphase so in case of metaphase meta means after phasis means stage so in metaphase it's a very short phase when compared to the prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase prophase is the longest phase and metaphase is the short phase so it is just for about 2 to 10 minutes which take place in metaphase okay meta means middle or meta means late or, or it is also called as after and this is a stage where now the chromosomes which have been formed during the prophase have to be aligning themselves so that they are undergoing the proper division of the daughter cell okay so in this phase the stage is called as stage of orientation why is it called as stage of orientation what do you mean by orientation orientation means arrangement okay so orientation means arrangement the arrangement takes place in very fast manner in case of prophase which is as i told you it is the longest phase it's the longest phase it takes lot of time for the chromosome to uh undergo the process that is coiling condensation then nuclear membrane and nucleolus disappearing so the time duration for this is somewhere about 30 to 60 minutes okay 30 to 60 minutes so this is just 2 to 10 minutes within 2 to 10 minutes there is uh, the stage of orientation so the alignment of the chromosomes will take place already the transition would have started with the late uh, prophase so hence both in metaphase now the chromosomes come exactly to the center what is the need of chromosomes to come exactly to the center we know that in case of the equational division 
right? In case of equational division, if this is a cell, the parental cell, when it undergoes the type of division, when it undergoes the type of division, that is at the end of telophase, the daughter cells have to divide equally. The daughter cells have to divide equally. When the daughter cells have to divide equally, equal proportion of the components in case of this, in case of the parent cell, have to be transferred to the daughter cell. Okay, equal components have to be transferred. That is why they align themselves at the center. The chromosomes align themselves at the center. So henceforth, since the uh, components of the nucleus, the components of the cell, the cell organelles, the number of chromosomes, everything gets divided equally. So just like when you cut a cake and it has to be equal parts, you're sharing among your friends. So it has to be equal. Likewise, even in metaphase, the chromosomes have to be divided equally and then they have to be distributed to the daughter cells. So this stage, metaphase, plays a very, very important role in the overall stages of mitosis. So not only here, even in case of meiosis, metaphase stage is a major role which takes place even there. So each and every phase has its own importance, but this is the importance of metaphase, which is ultimately able to divide. What if it is not dividing properly? Will it lead to any disorders? Will it lead to any problems? Definitely, yes. If the daughter cells are not receiving the correct number of the chromosomes, then it is undergoing the deficiency or there may be some syndrome which has been produced there. Okay, so unequal division may lead to any syndrome, may lead to any syndrome. Okay, that is why it is very, very important for the division of the daughter cells, which will, which has to take place during metaphase stage. Now, it's called a stage of orientation, as I told you, because it is going to align all the chromosomes. Okay, where is it going to align all the chromosomes? So let us understand how it is going to align all the chromosomes. Now these chromosomes, which are in the form of paired chromatids, okay, they'll be in the form of paired chromatids. They're just like this. These are a paired chromatids. This is one pair. And if I have to take this as an another pair, okay, and there'll be so many pairs like this. So in case of human, it is, 46 chromosomes, which are in 23 pairs, okay? Just like this, so they are in pairs. Now, chromosomes in the form of paired chromatid attach themselves by the spindle fibers. Now, they all are attaching themselves by the spindle fibers, okay? So when they are attaching themselves at the spindle fibers, so when we look into the structure of the chromosome, we know that the structure of chromosome basically is having the centromere. The centromere is to the centromere, the chromatids are attached. On either side of the centromere, there is a protein which is associated, which forms the secondary constriction, primary constriction. Okay, it's not secondary, it's primary constriction. And this protein structure is called as kinetochore. It's called as kinetochore. Okay, this is the kinetochore. So on either side of the kinetochore, with the help of this kinetochore, now the spindle fibers, spindle fibers, which are formed from the aster-like structures, let me write the star-like structure. So from this, the spindle fibers are formed and they are going to attach themselves like this. Okay, they are going to attach to the kinetochore. 
so this is the most important activity which take place during metaphase okay so the chromosomal kinetochore or it is also called as tactile fibers they are going to align themselves at the center of the cell and now the it forms a plate like structure this plate like structure is called as metaphase plate this plate like structure which is formed is called as metaphase plate and since they are going to align themselves on the center of the cell it's also called as equatorial plate it's also called as equatorial plate or it is also called as equatorial plane we know that equator is the center of the earth when we just uh, measure it isn't it so based on the equator the tropical regions are divided in the earth surface that is of course geometrically it is divided okay it's an imaginary uh, face so even here it is an imaginary face it's not exactly there is a plate formation but there will be something like this so you can see here all the chromosomes are now trying to be aligning themselves at the center okay just like an imaginary plane you can uh, identify this so we can make out that they are exactly towards the center right so this phase uh, or this plate is called as metaphase plate or it is also called as equatorial plate so this is a major event which take place during metaphase stage this is what i was telling you so the chromosomes move towards the equator of the spindle and they align themselves at the equatorial plate that is right in the middle and right angles to the spindle fibers so they are going to be forming the right angles to the spindle fibers okay and centromere of each chromosome is connected to asters so centromere of each chromosome especially which is held by the kinetochore is attaching themselves to the asters of the poles on either side of the poles okay on either side of the poles with the help of spindle fibers or chromosomal fibers now there are three types of these chromosomal fi fibers or they are also called as spindle fibers one is called as continuous fiber it's called as continuous fiber they are also indeed called as polar fibers the second type of fibers is the type of fibers chromosomal fibers which may extend from one end of the pole to another the third one is called as discontinuous or it is also called as interpolar fibers okay there are three types of fibers continuous fibers means or polar fibers as the word says polar fibers it is from extend from pole to pole of spindle so it is extending from if it is starting from here it is going to end here okay this is one type of fiber or on other side as well okay it is from pole to pole let me change the color one more let me write in blue okay this is the red one now coming to the blue one the chromosomal fibers next is which is attached to the centromere of the chromosome and extend to one of the poles so it may be from the centromere to one of the poles or maybe from the other chromosome maybe from other chromosome to one of the poles this is the second type now the last type discontinuous or interpolar fibers so it extends from a pole to variable distances but does not reach the opposite pole maybe it is starting from here it may end here or maybe it is starting from here it may just end here so this are called as discontinuous okay it's not continuous it is called as discontinuous or interpolar fibers which extends from a pole to variable distances but does not reach the opposite poles so these are the three types of spindle fibers so which run from one direction to another direction or from one pole to another pole may not reach the pole or might reach the pole okay so continuous fibers or polar fibers chromosomal fibers which 
are going to extend to one of the poles, either one of the poles. And the last one is discontinuous or interpolar fibers, which extend from a pole to variable distances, but does, does not reach the opposite pole. Then, so as I said you, it's an imaginary plane, which is seen in the metaphase stage. Next, let's go ahead with the next stage, that is anaphase stage. Before that, you can just see the transition to metaphase. So you can see the transition where the chromosomes are aligning themselves at the equatorial plane and how they have aligned themselves on the equatorial plane at the end of metaphase. So you can see in the plant cell along with the cell wall, plant cell along with the cell wall, that's the cell wall. And you can see the chromosomes which are aligning themselves on the equatorial plane. And also in case of animal cell, we can make out that this is the animal cell, the nuclear membrane and the astral formation here. So from the asters, the spindle fibers are formed. And you can see the chromosomes which are present on the equatorial plate. Next one. Yes, this is again a transition state, which is seen from uh, early metaphase to late metaphase. Next phase is anaphase. This is the third phase. Anaphase, when compared to the metaphase, is the shortest phase. Ana means up, phases means stages. So this is a stage where rapid stage of migration of chromosomes take place. Now the chromosomes which are aligning themselves at the equatorial plane are now getting ready to move away from the equatorial plane. Where do they move away from the equatorial plane? They have to move towards the pole. So since they are going to move towards the pole on either side oppositely, hence they are called as ana, that means up. Okay, they are moving from the center to up region, right? So this stage is called as anaphase stage. And when compared to metaphase, as I told you, it is the shortest phase because it is only happening within two to three minutes. So what are the events which take place in anaphase? The major events which are taking place in anaphase are the centromere of each chromosome. Now, if we have to just redraw once again the chromosomal structure. So here there's the spindle fibers which have been formed. So these are the spindle fibers which are attached to the kinetochores on either side. Okay. So let me even draw the kinetochores. Okay, so they are present on either side. Now, the centromere of each chromosome splits longitudinally into the chromosomal fibers which are going to be pulled. So let me write the chromosome complete structure here, children. Okay. So longitudinally, they are going to break up, right? And they're going to be split into two parts. So this takes place during anaphase. Centromere of each chromosome splits longitudinally. Okay, you can see the longitudinal division into two and chromosomal fibers, they're going to pull the daughter's centromeres towards the opposite poles. So when they are going to be pulled towards the opposite poles, you can make out here the chromosomes which have moved towards the opposite poles. So something like this, they are going to be like this. Okay, this is one side and they may be the other side. Equally, they are going to move towards the opposite poles. So the chromatids, they get separated. 
separated chromatids become daughter chromosomes known as monad chromosomes so this is called as a dyad chromosome it's called as a dyad chromosome now it becomes a monad chromosome and monad chromosome is generally having only uh, two chromatids whereas dyad chromosomes are basically having four chromatids so these separated chromatids become daughter chromosomes known as monad chromosomes so arms of the chromosome follow the centromere and move towards the opposite poles so the arms of the chromosomes when they move they are going to move on an equal basis okay so the shape and length of the chromosomes can be prominently seen in this anaphase so like uh, they'll be forming into different uh, shapes based on the position of the centromere so based on the position of the centromere they are going to form four important faces okay four important shapes so what are the shapes when we observe here you can make out they may be v shape just like this okay so since they are they have to be separated equally since they are moved towards opposite pole equally so their shape and length of the a uh, chromatid should always be the same okay that is how the division of the daughter cell has to occur so now what are the shapes which we observe here so one second what are the shapes which we observe here the shapes which we observe here are v shape l shape j shape and i shape v shape l shape j shape and i shape so the chromosomes goes on varying with their position on based on the centromere position so what are the centromere positions which you see there are four centromere positions so based on centromere based on centromere centromere position the chromosomes are of different types okay based on the centromere position they are of four types which includes metacentric metacentric second one is sub metacentric third one is acrocentric and the fourth one is telocentric metacentric means the position of the centromere will be equal on either side okay submetacentric means the position of the centromere is little away from the center meta means center it will be little away from the center and acrocentric means almost it is towards the poles okay almost towards not completely towards the end but it may be towards the pole which is generally not equal in its size whereas the telocentric is you can make out that the chromatids are towards the sorry centromere is towards the poles so these are the centromeres based on the position and based on that we find v shape j shape i shape and l shape so this is most important activity which take place during the anaphase stage also you can make out how exactly it appears in case of animal cell so you can see here how the chromosomes are been pulled on either side due to the spindle fiber actions so the spindle fiber will generally become shortened and this is due to the activity which takes place by the uh, spindle fibers which is getting pulled by the centrioles
once it is have been formed and this movement is called as sliding movement of kinetochore which is due to the protein transport which happens and that is how the shortening of the microtubules will take place for all these processes the energy is required because of the force of pulling atp will be utilized okay so that pulling process will take place and uh, that is how it moves towards the opposite pole right you can see in the picture how the chromatids are pulled and the centromeres are held still by the spindle fibers so this is in case of plant cell how the chromatids are been arranged towards the opposite poles so this is the diagrammatic view of anaphase so the major events are sister chromatids separate the spindle fibers begin to shorten because they have already pulled the chromosomes away chromatids away from the center so hence both they shorten themselves and that too they do it in a opposite direction so the cells begin to lengthen now right and gets ready for the next stage the last stage of mitosis is telophase in karyokinesis so this is the last stage during the nuclear division so telos means end phasis means stage telophase is the long phase it's not longest because longest is the prophase but it is the long phase when compared to the metaphase even when compared to anaphase okay so since it is the long phase the duration of this is somewhere about 3 to 12 minutes somewhere about 3 to 12 minutes and what exactly happens in this phase so during this phase the end phase chromosomes reach the poles they have already reached during anaphase and now they are undergone coiling to form the thick structures which are called as chromatids during the telophase it is completely the opposite that is from the poles when they are reach the poles they start uncoiling themselves when they uncoil obviously the thread like structure which were short they are now going to be longer in size okay so the uncoiling will make them longer in size okay they make them longer in size and thin thread like structures so these are going to be forming once again the th Uh, thin thread like structures which are slender or thin in nature and they become dis indistinct and form chromatin mass so once again where they they were originated they were thin thread like structures during the prophase after undergoing condensation they formed into the chromatids which undergone the condensation once again to form the chromosomes and now due to the uncoiling they are once again going back to form the chromatin mass each mass of these chromatin threads now becomes a daughter nucleus so each of these threads are going to be since they have been separated towards the pole so the mass will be like this in a cell here is one mass and here will be one one more mass which are moved towards the opposite poles then later they are going to once again reappear which one the nuclear envelope the nuclear envelope slowly starts reappearing which have been disappearing during the prophase stage now along with the nuclear envelope even the nucleolus will reappear okay so this is the stage where all the membrane the nuclear membrane will reappear along with the nucleus stage okay the nuclear membrane is going to reappear and the nucleolus is also been observed here so nuclear envelope slowly reappears around the mass of chromatin from pieces of old nuclear membrane so we didn't we didn't say that they have completely you know they are they have been gone out of the cell but they will be present 
in and around the cell these smaller bits which were uh, disintegrated now they are going to form into the nuclear membrane along with the nuclear membrane most of the organelles which were disintegrated would once again reappear like endoplasmic reticulum the nucleoi and also the sat chromosome of the nor right what is sat chromosome what is sat chromosome sat means sine acido thymonucleoni and nor represents nucleolar organizing region sat is nothing but sine acido thymo thymo nucleoni okay so this is a region where there is no dna present in it okay this is the only region sat region sine acido thymine thymo nucleoni it is the region where there is no nuclei and where is it present it is present in nor so nor represents nucleolar where the nucleolus is present nucleolar organizer region okay nucleolar organizer region is called as nor so in this region once again the nucleoli reappear and the other organelles also will reappear apart from this in animal cell astral rays and spindle fibers will disappear which had formed during the prophase and later which was continued during metaphase stage so animal cells will lose the astral rays and the spindle fibers will gradually disappear in case of plant cells the spindle fibers near the poles disappear but remain intact at equator to form a structure which is called as phragmoplast so during the formation next stage so all these spindle fibers they accumulate at the center and they form a structure which is called as phragmoplast so these phragmoplast majorly are going to help in the division of the cytoplasm in the next stage called as cytokinesis okay the word phragmas means hedge or enclosure it is going to enclose within the cell okay so they do not uh, you know just disappear but they are going to be forming into a compact structure at the equatorial plane so henceforth it is an important step during the next phase in plant cells that is the major difference between the plant cell and the animal cell where the phragmoplast formation is observed only in case of animal cell and not in case of plant cells so other than endoplasmic reticulum even the golgi bodies are going to be reformed during the telophase stage so this is the structure how exactly it looks so you can see the chromatin threads which are condensed which are condensed due to the recoiling due to the recoiling and also you can make out the nuclear membrane which has been reappeared along with the nucleolus of course the organelles are not seen here so the sister chromatids uncoil and become thin thread like chromatin fibers and they are going to be present to form the daughter cells so these are going to form the daughter cells in the next phase okay they have not yet been separated they will be separated during the next phase that is the cytokinesis 
So till now, what we studied was karyokinesis, that is division of nucleus. And in the next phase, which is following the karyokinesis is cytokinesis. So also you can make out here the how the telophase is observed, forming the daughter cells. So you can see the structure here, the same structure in the microscopic view. And also you can see it in the microscope, the fluorescent microscope where the daughter cells are formed and the spindle fibers are observed here. Okay. And this is what you can see. So now all the spindle fibers are going to align themselves on the center. And you can see they are going to be forming an intact structure. This intact structure is called as phragmoplast microtubules, which are going to form or going to divide the daughter cells. In case of animal cell, phragmoplast formation in case of plant cell will lead to the cell plate. It's going to form further a plate-like structure. And that is how the cell is going to be dividing here. But in case of animal cell, there will be a cleavage which is formed. Okay, there will be a cleavage which is formed in the animal cell. Uh, that cleavage is called as cleavage furrow, which leads to cytokinesis. So you can see the transformation from prophase to metaphase to anaphase to telophase. So major events in telophase is a nuclear membrane forms around the chromatin. The chromosomes begin to unwind. The spindle fibers begin to break down. Two identical nuclei are going to be formed. So these are the phases, interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So in case of the plant cell, there is a cell plate formation which is going to be divided during the cytokinesis. In case of animal cell, it is going to form a cleavage and that is how it is going to separate themselves. So this division of the cell or division of the cytoplasm is called as cytokinesis where kytos means cell, kinesis means movement. So in case of plant cell, the cytokinesis in plant cell is different because of the phragmoplast formation. Initially, there will be vesicles which is formed, vesicles which are formed, and these vesicles join together to form a plate-like structure, which is called a cell plate. Later, the cell plate grows outward towards the cell wall, unite to form new cells. That is during the cytokinesis of plant cell. In case of animal cell, the cell membrane squeezes or contracts around the middle cell and fibers around the center of the cell pull together and this creates a furrow and this furrow formation goes deeper and deeper until the cell membrane comes together and that is how the cell is going to divide. So you can see the microscopic view of animal as well as plant cell where furrow formation is seen and the plate cell plate formation is seen in case of plant cell. So this is the overall division. When a mother cell undergoes the prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, so the two daughter cells are produced, the number of chromosomes will remain the same in case of the daughter cells as well. Okay, so these are the phases which we observed in case of the mitotic division. Now let's go ahead with the significance of mitosis. What is the significance of mitosis? Mitosis helps in maintenance of genetic stability because the chromosomal number remains same. The chromosomal number remains same. And mitosis is involved in growth and development of multicellular organisms. So we know that in case of the animal cells, mitosis is going to occur in somatic cells, that is in the body cells, body cells or somatic cells. So 
wear and tear will generally occur. So when it is undergoing any processes, the growth will happen, the development will happen in most of these cells. And it also helps in maintenance of nuclear cytoplasmic ratio. So cytoplasmic ratio and nuclear will, ratio will be maintained because the cell is going to be divided into two equal half. So as I was telling, this will occur in body cells or somatic cells. So the worn out tissues or cells, especially like skin cells or the cells lining the gut and the blood cells, they will definitely uh, undergo the process of mitosis to regain once again the new cells. So regeneration of damaged part of an organ is also one of the significance of mitosis. And in case of unicellular organisms, it is a type of asexual reproduction. Lastly, mitotic division in meristematic tissues, especially in case of plants, which includes epical meristem that is at the tip and the lateral cambium, which is going to be formed during the secondary growth of the plant, that is the girth-wise growth of the plant, it results in a continuous growth of plants throughout their life. Since plant shows the growth continuously, so the type of division which occurs in these plants is going to be mitotic division. So now let us solve some of the questions pertaining to this topic. So the first question is, poleward movement of chromosomes takes place at, we know that the poleward movement is nothing but the movement of the chromosome towards the opposite poles. And this takes place in anaphase stage. Henceforth, the option is option A. Next, during mitosis, each chromosome in the beginning of the prophase is. So what will be the condition of the chromosome at the beginning? Single thread, two threaded, four threaded or circular. We know that it will be slender, th thin, thread-like structures, which are single in nature. Henceforth, option is single-threaded. Next one. Plant and animal cells division differ in what? We know that in cytokinesis, that is nothing but the division of the cytoplasm or the cell, we saw a unique feature of phragmoplast, phragmoplast, or cell plate formation, which is not seen in case of animal cell because it will undergo the furrow formation of the cleavage formation. So henceforth, the option is option A, that is cell plate. So that is how it differs between plant and animal cell division. Whereas prophase, metaphase, telophase, they are all common in case of plant and animal cell. Next question. After mitosis, the number of chromosomes in the daughter cells shall be one half of the parent cell, same as the parental cell, twice of the parental cell, one fourth of the parental cell. We know that when the mother cell is undergoing the mitotic division, The daughter cells which are formed, since it is equational division, it will be the same as parental cell. If it is 23 here, even here it will be 23 and 23. If the number of chromosome is 18 here, even here it will be 18 and 18. So it depends on the number of chromosomes present in each of the individual, which will be same because of the equational division, which will be distributed among the daughter cells. So the option here is same as the parent cell. Next one, U, V, or J, or even I-shaped chromosomes are seen in which phase? We know that due to the separation of the chromatids at the, towards the pole during the anaphase, because of the position of the centromere, it may be metacentric, submetacentric, telocentric, or acrocentric. The shapes are going to be seen in case of the chromosomes. So that occurs in case of anaphase. So henceforth, the option is D. Next question. Spindle fibers are attached to the chromosomes in the region of. We know that the chromosome is held together at the chromatids are held together at the center, that is the 
chromo centromere and this centromere has the protein which is called as kinetochore to which the spindle fiber is going to be attaching itself so henceforth the option is option b next question the correct statement for significance of mitosis is equal distribution of chromosomes restoration of surface volume ratio maintenance of nucleoplasmic index all statement a b and c are correct we know that equal distribution of chromosomes takes place since it is equational division restoration of surface volume ratio takes place because of the same reason and the maintenance of the nucleoplasmic index ratio will be same because of the equal distribution to the daughter cells so henceforth all options are right next question a sexual reproduction in unicellular organisms involve a sexual reproduction in unicellular organisms involve we know that in case of unicellular organism cell division is the most prominent thing which is going to occur and that type of cell division which happens in asexual reproduction is mitosis next question colchicin is what so colchicin is basically obtained from a plant which is called as colchicum autumnale colchicum autumnal so this plant produces an alkaloid it's a drug which is called as colchicin okay it's an alkaloid drug which is called as colchicin so what is the role of colchicin colchicin is called as mitotic poison okay it's called as mitotic poison what does it do colchic colchicin is a majorly a drug which will affect the cell division so at the metaphase stage it will start destructing all the spindle fibers and that is how there will be increase in the number of chromosome number because the alignment of the chromosomes will not be equal in the two daughter cells the distribution also will vary since there is increase in the chromosome number in since there is increase in the chromosome number it leads to a condition called as polyploidy it leads to a condition called as polyploidy ploidy is number of chromosomes poly means many so polyploidy may be in case of humans it may be more than 23 pairs like that it depends on the type where where it is going to affect so it is going to affect the Uh, mitosis process at the metaphase stage so destructing the spindle fibers which are formed during metaphase stage and that is how it has a lot of effect and leads to a condition called as polyploidy so these are some of the questions which we had to discuss for the topic mitosis and the significance of mitosis thank you students meet you in the next class